हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू क्रेडिट दिस इज डे थर्टी ऑफ आर फोर्टी फाइव डे लर्न ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपमेंट चैलेंज एंड वी हैव लर्न सो मैनी थिंग्स टिल डे एंड ऑल्सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न सम न्यू थिंग्स विद आर ब्लॉक चेन एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ओके सो इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस सीरीज फ्रॉम स्टार्ट और यू हैव वॉच सम previous videos of in this series you may know that we are developing a application by which we can send ethereum and token to someone else wallet address okay so we have this folder in our desktop says 45 days i am going to open this up and you can see we have this folder send eth which contains all the files we are using in this code so let me quickly open this with vs studio for this i am going to click on this option open with code so here is our code i'm just going to close these files and just increase the font size and zoom a little bit that you all guys can see clearly what i'm doing here okay so i think the font size is good for everyone to see i'm going to quickly run this by using live server so this is extension which you can download in your vs studio by default it will open up the brave browser but i don't want to use this for this video so i'm going to open my chrome browser and enter the port number here says localhost 5500 and if you don't know this port number you can see it is also written here server started at port 5500 so just quickly close this so as you can see we have this beautiful application here in which we have option to connect wallet and do some other stuff and if you are not catching this thing up i request you to go and watch previous 3 4 videos and you will get the better idea what we are doing here okay so just i'm going to click on this connect wallet button my meta mask wallet should pop up and this is here it will ask me to connect my wallet to the website and first of all if you are opening this first time you have to enter your password and we have seen how to set up wallet in i think first and second video in this series so if you don't know what meta mask and wallet and pass password just go watch those videos i'm telling this same thing many times because this all series is connected with videos so you have to watch it from start if you have some experience and have prior knowledge you can watch videos from between but i highly recommend you to watch all the videos from start to end and we are in 30th day of series uh, i think according to the norms and 45 videos to go so we have 15 videos more to go okay so in last video we have seen how we can truncate this address to show actual the important thing to remember the address but not the complete address this makes the ui messy and also this is not good to reveal your complete address to general users okay and here is the balance this is the sepolia testnet which is a ethereum based testnet we are not dealing with actual ethereum but this is all same to the actual mainnet and you can use this testnet for developing some tools some softwares on blockchain without requiring actual money and yes here's a important point i want to mention in starting videos we have shown you a faucet the faucet from alchemy which we can use to fetch free sepolia test eth but now some people told me that now this thing requires to have you some original eth or you can say the main net eth of 0.01 i think or some amount in your wallet and if you don't have the amount you cannot claim free eth the free sepolia eth so today i am going to show you a alternative faucet you can use and this is not other than from google itself so you can see right sepolia faucet and search for it and you can see this is i have shown you okay just close this so this is i have shown you earlier but now this ask for 0.01 eth you should have 0.0 eth in your i think 0.00 eth to claim the sepolia and in case you don't have you may have a problem because you are learning for just free so you can use this google clouds ethereum sepolia faucet just click on this and this is the same process 
you have to your uh, Google account. Just select the network Sepolia, paste your wallet address here and receive 0 0.05 Sepolia ETH. This is free and this does not require to you have some ETH in your main net. Okay, so you can use any of those. If you have 0 0.001 ETH in actual main net, you can use this also. But this is alternative. If you are having problem, then use this one. Okay. So I want to mention this thing because some users are facing this issue now. So I think this may help. Okay. So now let's head back to main agenda. Now in this video, we are going to add some extra features over to our application, which you can see for now, if I'm going to paste the address and click on fetch token balance, just balance comes up and there's no loading state. It looks some weird. For example, if I paste here, and the amount and click on send ETH. You can see the metamask pops up, but there is no UI change on the application. For some case, if the metamask takes some time to pop up and according to user, there is nothing happen. And then he can click two or three times, which may lead to some problems. And this is not good according to a good UI. So in today's video, we are going to add some loaders here that we can reflect to the user that something is happening in the backend. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to reject this and you can see we have also a status here, which says transaction failed. So just quickly refresh this. So click on connect wallet. Okay. So now in today's video, we're going to do add some loaders here. We add three loaders here and we'll update their status according to the transaction. Okay. So without wasting any time, let's do this for this. Just head back to your source code. I've already opened in my VS studio. So here is our JavaScript, HTML and CSS code. And now we are going to add preloaders to these buttons. So for this, first of all, we have to create it using HTML and CSS. So let's do this. I hope you are familiar with HTML and JavaScript. So I'm going to quickly create some loaders and I hope you will sync up with me. So for this, I'm just going to uh, scroll down a little bit and just decrease the font size so I can see the whole code at once. Okay. So let's see, we have a button here in send ETH, a fetch token balance and send token. So we need three loaders and we can apply same CSS to all of three. So first button is send ETH. So where it is? I'm not going to do some fancy stuff. I'm going to keep all the things simple. We use basic JavaScript to hide button and loaders and vice versa. Okay. So first button I think is up here, send ETH. So just quickly enter here. I'm going to create a div. You can create loader according to you, but I have a particular way to create loaders, which I found simpler to use. Okay. So I have created a div and a div inside it. I'm going to give it a class names, uh, but you can say loader for now. I'm just going to name it loader. And inside this, just keep as it is, we will reference it by using div. So if I save this, there is no visual change because the div is completely empty and we need to keep it empty. Okay. So just drag my CSS file here side by side and close this. So you can see where is our class and how we can design it. So just come down here. And if you don't know how to create later, you, you can use this thing also. Okay. So this is loader. And for now I'm going to give it a background of RGB. What do we can say? We can say 100, 100, 100 and some padding of like five horizontal, I mean five vertical and 10 horizontal. This means five from top bottom and 10 from left, right. If I save this, you can see here we have this uh, div or we can say a box. So just quickly give it a border radius. So which is going to be 15 pixel, I think. Okay. So we have given all the buttons 10. So I'm going to give it 10. Just save this and here it is now are the button placeholder is ready. Now we have to add the loader in this. 
so if you remember we have this div here we can create loader out of this div so i'm gonna reference that div from the loader class and i'm gonna give it a width for now just 25 pixel and height also is 25 pixel okay the border radius is 50 percent okay so for now i think there is no change just you can see the inner div take up some space and i want to keep the height of button and loader to same so just okay first let's give the border so we can see clearly border 2 pixel solid white okay so now we have this loader thing but we want to keep the size same so i'm gonna reduce the size it by 22 by 22 pixels okay so uh, let's do it 20 and 20 not a big deal okay so now it's nearly the same of height we can also adjust the width but for now i'm going to keep it as it is and now we have to create the loader effect so give one size of border to something different color so i'm gonna give border top two pixel solid black okay so you can see we have now this loader thingy and if we apply the rotating animation it will give a look and feel of a loader so let's create a quick animation here keyframes i'm going to name it as roller or you can name whatever you want just transform rotate how much 360 degree because we want to give it a complete rotation and back to rotate zero degree okay and just pass the animation here animation what is the name of animation it's ruler and 0 0.4 seconds and linear and infinite okay this is basic css i hope you are familiar with this or not just go watch the playlist available in the credits youtube channel you can learn a lot from those okay so if i save this and come back to our code we can see our loader is spinning very well so now the basic html and css part for loader is done i'm just going to keep the same loader on each and every button side by side so here also and i think i missed a button okay here it is okay so now if i save this you can see we have loaders below all these three buttons but we cannot display both of things at the same time which means if the button is visible then loader should be hidden and if the loader is visible then button should be hidden so by default i am going to display hide all of those loaders okay so i'm gonna name it a display none so just add what we can say we can add import it here to make this important and apply the css effect forcefully so now as you can see we have successfully hidden the preloaders and this is now exactly the same as the previous design so what we are going to do now we are going to display those loaders according to the condition which means when we are waiting for the prompt or the transaction to get successful we will show that loader and meanwhile the button the send button or the fetch button is hidden so for this we have to provide the unique id for all those three loaders according to their place and also the id for all those buttons okay so just do this from the first button so to this first button which is send it i am going to name it as send eth button make sense and id to this loader is send eth loader okay similar to here where we have our fetch token balance you can see we have id here fetch token balance okay we can also use this id and to pass the id here we can pass fetch token loader okay we have already id here so we have keep it as it is and now the third button if you see we have to pass id here we can say send token button and also the loader id send token loader okay so let's save this 
check the output there is no visible change because we have just provided the id and now the most interesting part that how we can disable and enable the loader according to the conditions so we have done the styling part so i'm going to close this and i'm going to bring up my js file which is script.js just close this drawer okay so if you see we have three buttons and that all three buttons do different type of task first button initiate the transaction of ethereum this transaction send ethereum from our wallet address or wallet to the provided wallet address and the amount is in this field if you can connect we can see we can pass the address we can pass the amount and click on send eth and this button open up this metamask and we want to keep that loader running until the metamask pop up is approved or transact successfully either or rejected okay so we have this condition for a loader so let's implement this and see how we can do that okay so we have our first button here this is a send eth button and send eth loader so if we check the function we can see this is connect wallet i'm we can also add the loader at connect wallet but for now you know the drill and you can add that by yourself later but this function we are interested in when someone submit the send eth form we have to do all this stuff which is initiating a transaction and if you have a look closely we have this await state and this is a asynchronous function which means this will wait for the transaction to get approved okay so when the button is clicked we want to initiate the transaction okay so the good thing is to add enable the loader here so what you can do we can first hide the button okay so document dot get element by id and if you notice we have the id to send eth button and we can style it by display equal to none okay we have just do two things either disable button enable loader or disable loader enable button so in this case we have disabled the button and let's check quickly if this small thing is working or not so just click on connect wallet enter the address enter the amount and click on send it and you can see the button is successfully disappeared and pop up is here now we just have to do put the loader here because button is already disappeared and if we enable the loader then it will take the place of button and it looks like a seamless transition okay so for now i'm going to reject this and you can see the button is still not here we will fix this so let's do and when the button is hidden we are going to show the loader so i can do that get element by id and we can say send eth loader okay style display and you can display like block or inline okay so i'm going to block i'm going to try block and let's see what will happen just connect wallet the wallet is connected enter the address enter the amount click on send eth and you can see the button is disappeared but loader is not here and i doubt this is because we have passed the important here important in the style that's why it's not working so no problem we will fix this okay so we can see console there is no error or something okay so let's fix this okay so we have seen this that this is not working so after taking some time i figured out because this code is good but the style.css have some problem you can see we have to add important here and when we are trying to show the loader with the help of javascript it cannot be do this because we have added here important and without using important we are unable to hide the loader you can see the loader size still visible this is because i just noted that we have give the div element of display flex here you can see display flex and this loader is also a div that's why the flex property is forcefully applied on this element yes we can change this system but the simple approach is to style the loader with the 
box class okay so now we can save this and you can see this will work fine okay and we have the same code here you can see in the javascript here it is send load send eth loader okay so this should work fine let's save come back here connect our wallet address amount and click on send eth and you can see the loader is shown and the popup is here so this is working fine but you can see this is not good because this is in center so fix this we can add flex here okay we have added flex here and in style we also add justify content center align item center okay this is basic javascript and don't worry i will provide the whole source code after the completion of this video in the description box so at any point you found any problem just go and check that code out and you will get the better understanding of what we are doing here Okay, so let's check again. Wallet is connected. Enter the amount, enter the address, and click on send it. And now you can see the loader is perfectly in the center, and this looks fine. Okay, so now what we have to do? We have to make this like whenever we reject the transaction or the transaction is confirmed, the loader should disappear and button appears again. As you can see, this time the loader keep loading because. We have only shown it, but not removed it anywhere. So how you can do that? You can. We have to do this at two places. First, in this try section, when everything is goes fine, uh, just copy this. You can also create a function for these repeated attempts, but for now we are just going to do this basic JavaScript. So here we can show the block and loader. We can do the none. Okay. and save this and to handle the transaction error and the wallet rejection we have to also do this in the error part okay so just paste and save okay or i think we don't have to put this two times i can just put it to after this try block and this should work fine let's check we will update accordingly okay so now our code is updated let's connect the wallet uh, let me check if the obs is working okay the obs is recording okay so just enter the address enter the amount and click on send eth and you can see the loader is working and this is from previous code also and uh, first we will going to reject so we have rejected and you can see the loader disappears and the button appears again and this time we are going to confirm the transaction wait 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 okay so we are going to do we are going to confirm and you can see it's still loading because the transaction is pending just wait for it it's still pending okay so transaction is confirmed and the button dis button appears again and the status also updated so yeah this section of our code is working absolutely fine now we have to do the same thing for these two loaders so let's quickly implement these feature there also so second thing is fast token balance which is not going to take so much time but it's take a little bit of time so we will add the loader there also so here is the fetch balance i think yes whenever the fetch token balance is clicked we are going to do this okay so we will do it here so what you can say document dot get element by id and the button name is fetch token balance you can see the button id here just paste this style dot display equal to none and we can copy the same thing for our loader just copy paste it here and change the loader name you can say i think what is the loader name let's check fetch token loader okay so let's rename it to fetch token loader and instead of none make it flex okay just save this and we can do this in one shot just copy and after all of this just paste it and change it 
to block and this to none okay i think the bell and stretching should also work fine now quickly test this connect wallet the wallet is connected enter the balance and click on fetch token and you can see something happens the button is disappeared and the balance is not visible yet so i think there is some problem here so you can see it says cannot read properties of null at script js 221 line number 221 let's see where it is 221 fet okay so we have a typo here this is token not token so just make sure to write the correct id names so let's refresh it close it for now connect wallet enter the token address click on fetch token balance it loads and the balance is successfully fetched so yeah this is also fine now the third and last block so now you know how we can do that there also so here is a send token form just going to copy these cool buttons and we are going to do that here okay just make sure to change the id and status of buttons so the second button is i think send token button send token button and change the style to none and send token loader change it to flex and just copy this again and reverse the process at last paste it here make it uh, what we can say block and style to none okay so the third thing is also will also hope so <laughs> work fine just connect wallet to address this is the address token amount 50 tokens send token okay so something goes wrong here token transfer failed and the loader goes up here which means something is good and something is not good the loader works but the transaction fails contract address not specified okay so let's see why this problem occurs okay so this is on line number i think 276 just quickly scroll down 276 274 75 76 so this is printing the error and contract address contract address not specified so here is the contract and here is the token address just check where is the token address i think we have entered the wrong token address i think this is the okay i think we have entered the wrong token address just correct it out and click on send token and you can see the loader is working fine just close this console here and we have the pop-up and for now i'm going to reject this okay so transaction is rejected and loader goes and now this time i'm going to approve the transaction to check both of the functionalities is working fine or not okay so the loader is here the pop-up is here everything goes fine just click on confirm it's still loading still loading let's see what goes on okay so it's pending and you can see the gray part here that means loader is still there and we will wait for the transaction to successfully okay so transaction is confirmed and you can see the loader disappears and button is back to its position so this is nice we have all three loaders and buttons working fine we have tested it thoroughly and this looks sick now so now we have a good front end and decent back end logic for our application that can use to send token fetch token balance and ethereum to other person using their wallet addresses okay so i think you have clear understanding how we are doing this and how to do this all this stuff and don't worry about the code if you found it confusing i will provide code in the description you can find index.html script.js and style.css in the link below in the description so go check it out try to do it yourself or if you are not able to do this just look through all the code read each line and you will get a better understanding what we are doing exactly here and if you want to modify this code or update this code 
I'll ask you to create a function by which you can eliminate this thing doing again and again. You can pass the variable, do some if else condition, whatever logic you can think of, just come up with it. I have shown you the simplest way to manipulating DOM using JavaScript. And if you are familiar with JavaScript, you can do in the whatever way you want, but it's the simplest and easiest way to do. Okay. So I think this is all fine. I will provide the code in the description and this is the day 30th. This is all for today and keep watching the series and we will complete this series very soon. I ask you to follow the series with me and code with me so that you can learn faster. Okay. So this is all for today. I will see you in the next video till then keep watching credit and stay safe.